from Learfield on the Mustang Sports Network. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris, brought to you by BMW. Test drive one at your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. Credit Union of Texas. Be a part of something unexpected. CUTX.org. Experience more. The Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options. Visit lyle.smu.edu. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Find your comfort zone. Also by Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, voted the best grilled cheese in Texas. Live from Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue, here is your host, Rich Phillips. Average, and uh, and if you held the the uh, top rated uh, passer in the country from a 75 percent completion rate to 58 percent, and held him to four or 15 on third down, um, would you have taken it? And I'd have said absolutely. And uh, I thought our guys played extremely hard. I thought we had plenty of chances. I know we'll talk about those uh, to win. I thought we played well enough to win, um, but uh, you know, obviously, we didn't take advantage of some, some key opportunities, and, and you have to do that when you have two really good teams going at each other. And I was just asking you your your initial thoughts on it is you know there's a reason they were ranked 15th in the country I think coming in, and I, maybe you know I think the American may get overlooked sometimes, but until uh, South Florida lost a couple of weeks ago, there were three teams in the top 25 uh, in the league moving on up, and uh, UCF obviously. One of the uh, better teams in the nation out there. Yeah, you know, I don't get caught up in, in chasing all the other teams in our conference besides SMU and, and whoever we're playing. So, hey, you know, it's really more about, about that. And so we had a chance to really study UCF for, for an extended period of time over the last week and, and two weeks even. Uh, and we knew they were very talented. Defensively, we thought that this may be one of the best defensive fronts and secondaries that we've seen. Uh, they had a couple of kids uh, that they, they came off of a nine-game suspension that came back. Uh, that were not a part of what we had seen all year long. No, number 14, the corner, mm -hmm. which was extremely, extremely uh, – played extremely well, uh, opposite of number 19, which will be a first-round corner in the league. There's no doubt about that, especially after watching him play against our guys. And uh, So, again, we, we knew we had our work cut out for us. Uh, they, were, they were really good defensively uh, and offensively just explosive. They, they had shown uh, – um, averaging 51 points a game and, and just the explosiveness of their offense and the improvement of their quarterback was uh, – and nobody had been able to really rush him very uh -huh. well. And uh, we were able to get two sacks and pressure him and hit him and, and uh, drop his percentage down to 58%. So we did a lot of really good things. I mean, our guys played really well. Uh, and I know the outcome did not come in the way that we wanted it uh, by no means. And we're not into moral victories. I didn't come here for moral victories by no means. But – but also, I know this, as you're building a program, it's, uh, you know, just as we've won a couple of games the last two weeks in a way we've won, um, you know, to have an opportunity to win a game against a top 15 team in the country uh, on two occasions late in the fourth quarter, um, you know, that's, uh, you, you know that we're now within plays of getting this program right, not, not within years. And, and, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's not, it's not about moral victories, but – Certainly, when you got here, your team, I don't think, would have had much chance against a, a, a quality opponent like UCF. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to say that, but uh, I know that they're very talented and uh, they're going to they're gonna win a lot of games. Um, you know, what's left this year, and he's done a great job, but, uh, but also feel like that our, our, uh, you control your own destiny going into the third week or going into the last three weeks of the season. Um, I do know this, you went out. Uh, you, you're, you get a chance to play these guys again. So that's, uh, that's our goal. That's where we're at, and that's all you can ask for going into your final three weeks of the season. Well, coming up this week, it is back on the road at the Naval Academy Saturday afternoon. That will be a 2.30 kickoff central time uh, against Navy. We'll talk specifically about them a little bit later in the show, but this has to be one of the most challenging preparation weeks, I would think, especially for Van Malone and your defense because it's an offense you just don't see. Well, it's, each week presents its own different sets of unique challenges. Uh, 
the game plan within the game plan. I mean, last week your your uh, your challenge to stop the speed and the size of uh, uh, Central Florida, and uh, you know, in one bad step, one bad one bad pursuit angle, uh, the speed that they had, and it showed that on on two breakdowns that we had in the secondary. You, know, you take one bad angle and and. Uh, you know, you don't have a guy. You know, th th those guys were riding uh, riding major motorcycles as they came through there, and, and uh, you take a bad angle on them, you you, you can't catch them on a mini bike. So <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You got to you got to have great angles, and you got you got to understand those things. So every week provides a different set of challenges. This week is no different. Um, to line up and stop the option, um, it's uh, you know it's something that we haven't fared very well the last two years. Um, and uh, I know that we've, we've worked on it. We've visited different staffs all over the country. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've talked about it. We've worked it in fall camp. We've worked it through the course of the season. And, uh, you know, you put a plan together and, and you go play hard. And, and at some point it comes down to a will to and a want to. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's where we are right now with our guys. I'm, I'm excited about this, this challenge we have in front of us. And one of the biggest challenges for getting ready for the option attack is that unlike when uh, you and I were in high school, these kids, when they were in high school, they don't see things like this anymore. Well, you don't. You know, you don't. And, and uh, you know, to play the cut block as many times as mm -hmm. you're going to have to play it, not only just from a D-line standpoint, but these guys do, do a great job getting to the second level, cutting your, your linebackers, and then even getting to that third level and cutting your safeties down. Uh, so these guys are going to have to play and understand it. They're going to get cut. And it's, uh, it's part of it. Uh, but at the same sense, it's just a physical attack, and you're going to have to match their physicality. This is Tempo Talk with SMU head coach Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips. We're here at Ozona Grill and Bar every Monday night from 7 until 8 of game week throughout the SMU football season. Later in the show, a chance for fans to ask questions of the coach. You can do that throughout the week by going to smumustangs.com, submitting your question uh, on the Ask the Coach button. You can submit them on Twitter with the hashtag of Tempo Talk or join us in person each Monday night at Ozona Grill and Bar from 7 until 8, and you can submit them via our staff here on site. We'll talk some more specifics about uh, SMU and UCF and get into uh, some of the things from the defensive side of the ball coming up next here on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. The best road is the road home. Start yours at the BMW Road Home sales event with a holiday credit of up to $3,000 on select new models. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Up to $3,000 credit is applied against MSRP of final purchase, not tax, title, destination, or handling charges. Must take delivery by November 30th. Credit allowance varies by model. $3,000 credit is for 2017 X5 and 2017 3 Series. Please see your client advisor for details. Test drive at one of your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. With over 7,000 athletes in the greater Dallas area, Special Olympics Texas is dedicated to providing programming for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. By offering year-round training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-style sports, the athletes get a chance to develop physical fitness, build friendships, and experience the thrill of friendly competition. SMU Athletics is a proud collegiate partner of Special Olympics Texas. For more information about registering an athlete or signing up to coach or volunteer, visit SOTX.org or call 800-876-5646. It's finally time for some Mustangs football, y'all. And Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue has the perfect spot in the best patio in town. So head over to Ozona and yell at the TVs while enjoying some great West Texas favorites and drinking some ice cold drinks. And don't forget about happy hour from 4 to 7 Sunday through Friday with a dollar off all bar drinks and complimentary chips and salsa. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Look them up on ozonagrill.com. Go SMU! If you experience hip or knee pain, I know what you're thinking. Ooh. And basically, you have two choices. You can wait until the, gah, gets so bad you can't stand it. Or you can take the first step to living without, aha, right now at yourjointhealth.com. An online hip and knee assessment from the health system more people choose for joint health in North Texas. Texas Health. Ah. Visit yourjointhealth.com today. When it comes to your signage needs, trust the experts at Fast Signs North Central. With more than 50 years of knowledge, Fast Signs North Central will help provide you with a true turnkey experience. From branding and design work to complete production and installation, let Fast Signs North Central make your vision a reality by calling 214-890-4444 or find them online at fastsigns.com backslash 11. Fast Signs North Central. More than fast, more than signs. 
Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, serving up the best grilled cheese in Texas. For four years in a row, Ruthie's has been voted the best food truck of SMU and Park Cities. Ruthie's is a crowd favorite among the ponies. You can find the food trucks rolling on SMU campus, SMU home games, and you can find them regularly at Clyde Warren Park. To book Ruthie's for a private party, visit their site at ruthiesfoodtrucks.com. Because after all, there ain't no party like a grilled cheese party. So, seize the cheese. The SMU head coach, Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips here every Monday night from 7 until 8 at Ozona Grill and Bar, but just for a few more weeks because football season is winded down. Six and three, the record. Only three more weeks to go for the Mustangs. We will have basketball, though, to talk about, too, here coming up in January. Tim Jankovic will be back with us every Monday night for his weekly show. And the SMU men's basketball team, by the way, opens up at home this Friday night against Maryland-Baltimore County, a 7 o'clock tip at Moody Coliseum, and I can tell you that individual tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. for SMU basketball single-game tickets go on sale, so you can uh, get those beginning tomorrow at 10 a.m. The SMU Mustangs on the road this Saturday afternoon to play the Naval Academy, 2.30 Central time for the kick on that. Last week uh, at home against Central Florida, the 31-24 loss. We talked a little bit about it earlier. Uh, Coach, I, I was telling you that I was just shocked when I looked down and saw the total yardage numbers from the game for Central Florida. Of course, it is top offense in the country, and you held them, what, 20 below, I think, their scoring average on the year because the yardage numbers didn't dictate, didn't indicate, I think, the way that game went for you guys defensively. That was, I I thought there were guys flying all over the field of the football and making plays for you on Saturday. Well, you had to have a bend but don't break mentality. You weren't going to shut them out. I mean, nobody's done that all year long. Matter of fact, we're the only team that's played them as close as as, uh, as we've had uh, all year long. And so – We knew that we were going to create some turnovers. We got to match their physicality. We got to play extremely physical from the linebacker standpoint. Uh, And I thought we did that. We did some really good things. I thought our coverage was well uh, for the most part. We had a couple of critical mistakes. And when you have critical errors and you get out of your gap, um, bad things happen. And and it happened. They scored two touchdowns on two critical mistakes. And, uh, you know, those things that, that, that happens when you play great football teams that we did. But uh, overall, defensively, I thought from a collective group, I thought it was one of the better performances that we've had in, in, uh, since at least week two. Uh, I thought that we played as a group, played better last week in the loss than we did each of the last two wins at Cincinnati and Tulsa. And so it just shows you that's, you know, you know, for us to be golden in the month of November, we got to continue with that type of, of, of mentality on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, but Kaolone was very busy again with nine tackles, but I really thought the, the linebackers got a lot more involved in the mix this past week. For oh, we you. did, and, and, and another one, uh, you know, Delonte Scott uh-huh. was, was a young man. This is a guy that's came on for about each of the last three weeks. You've really seen the improvement out of him. Uh, he's going to have to continue to, to improve. Or, you know, we lost Tyson Neal for, for uh, a few weeks, and uh, so we'll see how that goes, but – uh, you know, to be able to have that, I, I, I thought Demerick Gary played better. Uh, finally get the chance to see him making some plays. Obviously, we know what we're getting with Justin Lawler and Mason Gentry. Uh, but uh, Anthony Rohn continues to play well. This is two weeks in a row. And uh, Kyron Mitchell um, was, was another one. But, you know, at, at the linebacker position, you know, one of the young men that uh, really stood out was our true freshman in Delano Robinson. Mm-hmm. I, I was really proud of him. Uh, he did some really good things. He's going to have a chance to be, have, a, have a great career here. Are we to the point of the year where it doesn't matter anymore if you're a true freshman? He's got enough football, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you, you look at it that way. But, uh, uh, you know, these guys get an opportunity to get in there and make some plays, and, and that's what you're really mm-hmm. looking for at this point in the season. And then uh, I don't know what else we can say about Jordan Wyatt, but what a big playmaker he is. Uh, of course, had the pick six. Also, a big force fumble uh, deep in your own end. Yeah, just a great leader for us, you know. And, you know, it, it just shows his mentality, especially playing the corner position. When you, you know, if you're going to play corner, you got to you got to have a short memory. And, and you know, he got beat on occasion uh, on one of the pla- on one of the passes down their sidelines, but rallied back. Uh, was able to come up with a pick six, cause fumble, and, and such a vocal leader for our program, uh, especially over the last five weeks of the season. We've really challenged him to kind of step up that role. Uh, and help these young kids out, and uh, and he's done that, and I'm really proud of him and the way he's playing. I, I feel like these days, the, given the way offenses are, especially in college football and the numbers that we see put up, uh, your team doing it too, of course, 489 yards 
uh, for the Mustangs offense on Saturday. Not just corners, everybody on defense seems like you need to have a short memory because the fact is lots of yards are going to be gained, lots of points are going to be scored by college football offenses, and numbers like that don't always indicate, I think, what your defense is doing. Well, especially in our conference, when you look at the different conferences across the country, I mean, it's uh, – you know, when you look at building a defense, it starts with the defensive line and the depth that you have to have in the defensive line because the season wears on you. Uh, and when you look in this conference, it's it's hard to create the depth that you need. And uh, it's maybe it, it's more efficient in other conferences. But uh, so there's a lot of points scored in this conference. Uh, there's there's uh, some really some of the top offenses in all of college football are in this conference right now. Uh, a few uh – uh, several of the last few weeks, I know you had been concerned about the way your team started the game. You felt like your team came out flat, and it led to some halftime deficits like against Tulsa a few weeks ago. Uh, so safe to say that wasn't the case it looked like on Saturday. Well, you, you, we scored. Obviously, the defense held them on fourth down. Right. Which was, a, which, which was a huge momentum lift for us. And in first play of the game, you're able to go the distance with James Prochet and Ben Hicks hooking up. And, uh, and, and get off some momentum and get you, get you started off on the right foot. And, and, uh, and I think at that point it just kind of shows you get a fourth down stop. Uh, you know, one of the things that we did, we, we, you know, we, we, uh, you, you always have to look at the win. You play the win into the factor of it. And, you know, Coach Smith and I and, and uh, Coach Gunn, Coach Riley and I always talk before the game, what do we want to do? Um, you always want to try to have the win to your back in the second and fourth quarter. But because of the circumstance we were playing such the, the explosive opponent that we were playing, it was important for us to have the win in the first quarter mm -hmm. and to see if we couldn't pin them uh, and to try to get off some, some of the – get some momentum going our way. And it definitely paid off. I thought that was a huge uh, addition to us uh, both in the first and the second half to get off on the right foot. But stop them on the fourth down, first score on the first play of the game, and all of a sudden you got a belief. you got guys excited on the sidelines and uh, – and here we go. It's going to be a four-quarter battle, and, and let's go play. Was it the results, you think, that got the guys going, or did you have a sense before the game that your guys were ready to go right from the start? I, you know, I knew all week long that uh, we, we really challenged our guys all week long about uh, we were going to have to play better. To be, to be golden in the month of November, we were going to have to play better than we have had each in the Cincinnati and the Tulsa week. Even though we had won, we weren't going to be happy. We weren't going to be satisfied. Uh, I didn't recruit uh, guys to come here to be average. Average is not acceptable in this program. We weren't going to accept being, being average at practice. And so we set the tone pretty early in the practice week and, and uh, that we needed the want to to be far greater than, uh, than what we've seen and the will to. That we were, as a coaching staff, we were going to provide the how to, the how to, how to do it. Uh, but uh, the one thing that they were going to have to bring is the will to and the want to. And, and uh, so we set the challenge, and, and all week long we felt like that uh, – we had great preparation, and, and there was an edge about our guys from, uh, from Tuesday on. And uh, the Mustangs uh, right there with them into the fourth quarter on Saturday. 31-24 Central Florida did get the win. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, about the offense, and also something that happened on Saturday night that had not happened all season to SMU. That's coming up next year on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. It's finally time for some Mustangs football, y'all. And Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue has the perfect spot in the best patio in town. So head over to Ozona and yell at the TVs while enjoying some great West Texas favorites and drinking some ice cold drinks. And don't forget about happy hour from 4 to 7 Sunday through Friday with a dollar off all bar drinks and complimentary chips and salsa. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Look them up on ozonagrill.com. Go SMU! Hey, Mustang fans! Football season is just around the corner, and that means it's time to start planning your boulevard. And we want to help make it easy and hassle-free. Beginning this season, our team at Block Party will be offering full turnkey service with premium reserve space, top-quality tents, lounge furniture, and bellhop services to Mustang fans who are looking for a better game day experience. All you need to do is show up, and we'll handle the rest. For more information and to book a hassle-free boulevard, please visit our website at blockpartypresents.com. Business is a game, and if you want to win, you have to be faster, smarter, and more focused than the competition. Which is why SMU Cox offers the Fast Track One Year MBA, designed to launch your career in just 12 months. Learn from world-class faculty, study with driven peers, and connect to a global alumni network spanning 80 countries. The Fast Track One Year MBA, a major career highlight, only from SMU Cox. More online at coxgrad.com. 
If you're experiencing enlarged monthly auto payments, Credit Union of Texas may have the cure for you. Let one of our loan experts do a free rate checkup on your current loan to see where we might be able to save you money. With rates as low as 1.69% APR, we think we'll have you feeling some relief in no time. Visit cutx.org today to find out more. Warning, refinancing your auto loan at Credit Union of Texas may cause an increased feeling of excitement due to lower auto payments. If the joy you feel saving money lasts more than two hours, please tell a friend so they can experience the CUTX difference. APR equals annual percentage rate and is subject to credit approval. Membership required, federally insured by NCUA. ESPN's Neil Everett here. This college football season, Nissan's putting you in the driver's seat. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com. Build a customized Titan wrapped in your school's colors. Then register for a chance to win it. Or you can win a trip to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Enter the Nissan Heisman House sweepstakes. Take on today. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Ends 12 8 17. Open to residents of USDC 18 and older. Official rules at NissanUSA.com backslash Heisman House Sweepstakes. Sponsored by Nissan North America. Every Saturday, football fans flock to stadiums around the country to cheer on their teams. Chances are, the next person your business needs to hire is in the stand somewhere. But how do you find them? Here's the smartest way. Go to ZipRecruiter. One click posts your job to over 100 job boards and ZipRecruiter identifies relevant candidates fast. 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within 24 hours. Choose the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter. Leading job site of college sports fans everywhere. For your free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash football. Welcome back to Tempo Talk with SMU head coach Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips with the Everybody Nights. 7 to 8 at Ozona Grill and Bar. I want to remind you to do game day right this football season with LG's game-changing home appliances. Receive up to $150 off on select LG laundry bundles now available at your local Nebraska Furniture Mart. The SMU Mustangs back on the road Saturday afternoon taking on uh, Navy, it is a 2.30 kickoff time for the Mustangs and the midshipmen. It's on CBS Sports television-wise. It'll be on 13.10 and 96.7 FM. The ticket radio-wise beginning at 2 o'clock with the pregame show. Uh, now, the subject I want to talk about here, I know is a little sore subject with Coach, but I just think, I don't want to talk about the ramifications of this, but we had something happen Saturday for the first time all season, and I don't know how a football team goes nine weeks into a season before you suffer your first lost fumble of the season I know it was a critical one but we're going to leave that part alone <laughs> how do you go through eight games and into your ninth before your team it was only the fifth time you've even fumbled the ball at all in the first one that had been lost well you, you know that's part of our program it's part of who we are and we talk about it all the time about taking care of the football both creating turnovers on defense and um and, and protecting the ball on offense and you know one of the things one of the the, the, the stats as you look across the country at the end of each year is the is the uh, is the positive or negative rate of turnover margin. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to be in that positive category, positive double-digit category is a big deal. And, and usually it constitutes wins along the way, wins and losses. And, uh, you know, our guys have done a great job. Coach Trailer's done a great job of, of uh, drilling it, uh, talking about it. And, uh, and obviously our running backs have done a really good job. And the guys that carry the football have done a good job of protecting the ball. Uh, but it did. It, it happened. And... Um, I think it was only we were one of two teams in the country that uh, had not fumbled a ball. And uh, I even hate talking about it, but uh, <laughs> knock on wood, hopefully that's the last one. But, uh, you know, our guys do a great job. And, and uh, you know, going in and, you know, Cayman Freeman's done such a great job for us this year in running the ball. And, you know, we go in there and you, and you score right there going into the end zone, uh, uh, you know, and you, and, you, and you hit that field goal or, or better yet, you – you, uh, you, 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 you hit Trey Quinn, which was wide open mm -hmm. in the end zone right before half. You go in tied up 21-21. You know, it's a different game. There's no doubt about it, the way our guys played. I mean, it, that, those things really matter. And, uh, but our guys, there's nobody that goes out there with any intent to, to fumble a ball or, or anything. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it's part of it. And a lot of that has to do with the way that, who you play. I mean, they did a great job tackling the ball. And, being physical as well. So you just have to take and protect that football, especially the closer you get to the to the end zone. And I can tell you that the SMU is still is fifth in the nation in turnover margin at plus 12, fifth in the nation in fewest turnovers lost, and 15th in the country in turnovers gained. Like you said, those are numbers that will add up to wins along the way, most definitely. Yeah, I think that that's uh, that's no doubt. And that's uh, that's definitely something to celebrate. Obviously, we've got, the, you know, some ball left this season and would love to be celebrating that at the end. But mm -hmm. That uh, there is there is a direct correlation in that statistic, and also the six wins that we have today. Totally agree. All right, now on Saturday, uh, you know we we've talked a lot about this uh, at the beginning of the season, how strong you were at wide receiver, and 
three guys that you were really counting on. And what we've seen, certainly, in, uh, much of the year, two guys definitely were leading the way for you. Of course, Cortland Sutton, as everybody expected, and Trey Quinn has really uh, emerged as a terrific threat for you. But the last couple of weeks, we started to see James Prochet uh, emerge for you a little bit more. And, boy, especially right off the, get, the, uh, the bat with an 86-yard touchdown catch. But a huge game for James with 173 yards on seven catches. And, uh, man, that makes it really dangerous for defenses when you got three guys like that. Well, there, there's without a doubt, when you start looking at the way people play us uh, and, and having now to account for James, we all know what Trey's done. We know what Cortland's done. And, and now that James is doing and, and has had the weeks that he's had, I mean, we have a chance to have three 1,000-yard receivers this mm -hmm. year before the season's out, and that's, uh, that's unbelievable, and, and a 1,000-yard rusher. And so, you know, th those are some great things that, that you can achieve in this program. This offense it provides that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is. It, it's, it's, it's a pleasant addition to, uh, to the, taking stress off of both Trey and Cortland. And you got them on the field all, th all at the same time. That's even better. Was James getting lost a little bit just because Trey was catching so many balls there, especially that stretch he had 49 in three games? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if it's so much that. It's just the way that, uh, you know, the, the way people were just playing him. And, um, and, and then James being able to come onto the scene at the right time. And so I, I think it's more that than anything. Uh, Cortland's game the other night, we all know, of course, for his size, he has really good speed. We know what a physical receiver he could be. But he had about three catches the other night where I was just blown away at his hands. Yeah. Not only how good they are, how strong they are. There was one on a little quick stop route. Looked like I thought, man, that's about to be picked for a touchdown. And he just reaches up and snatches it away. His hands are just incredible. Yeah, he, he's, he's just a strong physical receiver. And, uh, you know, we had opportunity. We actually targeted him, I think, six more times. And uh, actually five more times and was unable to get the ball to him. I thought there was a couple of times it could have been a holding call or a pass interference call. And, uh, but he's just so physical and so strong, he's not going to get a lot of those calls. And I think you saw that. I know the one you're talking about, it's on our sidelines. Uh-huh. Right? where he basically just kind of plucks the ball out of the air and just holds the ball out and above and away from the defender. And, again, you're talking about a, a first-round draft pick at wide receiver going against a first-round draft pick at corner. Right. So that's, that was two really talented uh, <laughs> players on the field right there uh, guarding each other and going at each other. So uh, uh, to be able to make plays like that, they're going to make their fair share of plays, but to see Cortland step in and make those plays was really good. Uh, I mean, is that sometimes about size of hands? Is that hand strength that he has uh, just God's yeah. gift right there? What well, is that? A, a little bit of everything, <laughs> to be honest with you. He uh, – he did a great job of, of setting the guy up and running his route and then using his body to, uh, to, to uh, his big body to be able to shield the ball out. And then Trey with 11 catches, but uh, limited on yards, 47. They really were playing, especially on those bubble screens, uh, really tight it looked like. Is there something that you guys are having to look at to do a little differently there to get no, him some more yardage? Yeah, no, no not, not at all. Um, they, were, they were really good in the secondary. I mean, you got to give them credit. They played a lot of two-man and – and at times they would show, a, a, when I say two-man, a, a two-safety look and a man underneath. And they would show that look at times and then bracket and over and under uh, or an in and out office tray to, to, to minimize him. They know he's such a really uh, efficient route runner. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he you know, the, normally in the past, and we did, we picked up a few uh, first downs off of our of our, our, our bubble screens, but um, you know, really, they did a good job defending them as well. And then Ben Hicks, not a guy I know you're depending on for a lot of rushing yardage, but I thought that was about as good as I have seen him run the ball, and and not even just always running the ball, but move it around in the pocket to buy himself some more time and set to throw. Well, he's done a really good job of that this year, especially late late in the year, the last five weeks of the season, he's moved well. Uh, I wish he would have. And, and, benefited for us this past week in, in, in some occasions, picking up some key first downs or getting us into some manageable down and distance. But uh, there were several times that, that he flushed and he should have stayed in there a little mm -hmm. bit longer. And if he would have, you know, we had some receivers coming open. And, uh, you know, so we got we to create that fine balance. And, uh, and, and he saw it and he knows it. Um, there's a time to run, pull the ball down and go. But that's not – that's, that can be done on occasion, but it's not who, what his strength is. His strength is sitting in the pocket and, and letting those receivers do their work and then come open and, and sit in there and hold that ball and, then, uh, and shorten your base and get the ball out right at the right time. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris, brought to you in part each week by ZipRecruiter. Find qualified candidates quickly and easily with ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, the leading job site of Mustang fans everywhere. For a free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash 
SMU. We will have our Ask the Coach segment coming up next year on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. The patients have spoken. Texas Institute for Surgery has one of the highest ratings when it comes to patient satisfaction. Texas Institute for Surgery is a state-of-the-art physician-partnered acute care hospital that specializes in treating sports medicine, orthopedics, joint replacement, spine, and pain management, among many other clinical services. Texas Institute for Surgery, the first choice for care by physicians and patients. For more information, go to TexasInstituteForSurgery.com. Texas Institute for Surgery is a physician-owned hospital. Tired of searching online for custom catering companies? Looking for someone who can craft a special menu for your event? Look no further. The Festive Kitchen has it all. From on-site lunches and drop-off catering to daily handcrafted food for your employees, let the experts at the Festive Kitchen design a game plan for all of your catering needs. The Festive Kitchen also offers daily food shop specials, weekly entrees, and seasonal food shop menus. Find us at thefestivekitchen.com. That's thefestivekitchen.com. Looking for a new place to bank? At Credit Union of Texas, we're resetting the standard in the financial industry. I look forward to going to Credit Union of Texas because I know it will be a happy and relaxing experience. Credit Union of Texas is a valuable part of my financial life. Moving to Florida this month had me reviewing whether to keep my accounts here in Texas or move them to Florida. Because of the great technology options, I'm able to continue my relationship with CUTX without moving my accounts and starting over. Visit CUTX.org for more. Federally insured by NCUA. College football programs know the importance of recruiting. Finding the nation's top talent is essential to their team's success. The same is true for business. And you can find the best talent for your business with ZipRecruiter. One click posts your job to over 100 job boards and ZipRecruiter identifies relevant candidates fast. 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within 24 hours. Choose the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter. Preferred job site of college sports fans everywhere. For your free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash football. Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, serving up the best grilled cheese in Texas. For four years in a row, Ruthie's has been voted the best food truck of SMU and Park Cities. Ruthie's is a crowd favorite among the ponies. You can find the food trucks rolling on SMU campus, SMU home games, and you can find them regularly at Clyde Warren Park. To book Ruthie's for a private party, visit their site at ruthiesfoodtrucks.com. Because after all, there ain't no party like a grilled cheese party. So, seize the cheese. How do you get large groups of people to and from events? Do what the Mustangs do and rely on wind transportation. We make it easy. Simply visit GoWind.com, give us the details, and we'll take care of things from there. Wind has provided large group transportation for decades to high school, college, and pro sports teams. We also take care of church groups, employee outings, convention travel, casino tours, and more. Your time and your experience is our passion. Visit GoWind.com to book. That's G-O-W-Y-N-N-E.com. Welcome back to a Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips. We're here every Monday night from 7 until 8 at Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue in Dallas. It is time now for our weekly Ask the Coach segment. It's brought to you by SMU's Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options with tuition reductions available for military personnel across the globe. Check it out at lyle.smu.edu. First question tonight coming online from uh, David in Dallas. Overall, what a great performance for your team Saturday. Proud of what you've done for SMU and our program. Question is, what strides can we make to help eliminate the big plays on defense? Well, I think when you look at it, missed tackles are, are something that just continue to show up at times. Uh, you know, taking a bad angle. I know I addressed it earlier in the show. You've got to take great pursuit angles. We've got to be more gap sound. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, those, those things are going to happen. Again, you're playing against uh, quality offenses that we've played against. Uh, you're going to give up a big play. Uh, I think we gave up 12. I think offensively we had 10. And, uh, and so that's part of that's, – that's happening. That's part of the game. We just have to minimize – the mental errors that lead to the big plays of getting out of your gap when you have a great call on. Uh, and that just comes down to, to uh, continue to just keep repping and keep doing what we're doing and, and uh, keep playing and, and um, keep getting guys in the right position. And it, it's just – it's football players making plays, uh, defeating blocks, beating one-on-ones. And uh, that, that just all comes with the game. 
How much does confidence play into that, too? You know, you can't be playing timid out there, I would think, because that's the way you can get burned. Yeah, you have to have a lot of confidence to step on that field, especially if you're, you're in the back end and playing the safety and the cornerback. You, you better play with some confidence or it's going to be a long night. What do you guys do as a coaching staff to build that confidence? Obviously, a lot of it comes from results with six wins already this year, but what can you do as a coaching staff to build a player's confidence? Well, I think, I think the biggest thing that we try to do is, we, you know, put the how-to in front of them, the plan, uh, and make sure they're prepared as much as they can prepare through the course of the week. And, you know, confidence is, is developed through your preparation and then going out and executing it in practice. And that's how you build confidence and then going and making plays on the, on the, on the field. Uh, some of it comes when, when you're youth, when you've got a lot of youth out there, um, you know, and you, and you have to be able to overcome and, and just play the next play. As part of our culture is just playing the one play at a time mentality. doesn't matter what happens. It's got to be all about the next play. Uh, next question here comes online from Robert in Dallas. I understand you have a few trick plays in the playbook. Are there certain ones that you always have available to call during the course of the game, or do you try to feel the flow of the game and see if there's an opportunity that presents itself? Well, a lot of it is opportunity. Um, you know, where you are uh, on the field has a lot to do with it, whether it's a right hash call or a left hash call, where you're at. Uh, as far as the field position, 25, 35-yard line, depends on the, tr the play um, and then just the feel of the game, you know, when you feel like maybe a sudden change, you see a defense maybe that's let down just a little bit uh, to be able to have a chance to, to capitalize on one. So you don't go into the game with, you know, all right, we're going to do this, this, or this, have certain trick plays you know you're going to call in a game? Well, I mean, we do. We usually take in two to three, mm -hmm. maybe four at a time, and, and maybe if you get to one, possibly two has been a good night. It just all depends on, you know, you getting in there and getting a feel of it. How much do you work on those weekly? Yeah, we work on them quite a bit. I mean, we usually set aside a couple of days a week, a five-minute segment to where we'll work, uh, we'll work our, our – our trick plays or what we call our specials. How much more is Cayman asking for pass attempts, too? Because no, he was no. a quarterback yeah, in high no. school. Yeah, yeah. No, he has. He has. How much did he ask for, for more pass attempts? Yeah, well, he's, he just uh, he needs to continue to block for that quarterback and run that football, <laughs> and then all that other stuff will work itself out. He did look like he made a good decision to throw it away the other night yeah, when there wasn't did. anything there. Yeah, I, I told him if he'll quit being a coach, I'll be quit being a running back. So, uh, <laughs> Just uh, he, he takes care of the, 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 his, uh, his, his 20 square foot and everything will be all right. <laughs> uh, question from Layla in Dallas. How do you change your defensive game plan versus an option team like Navy this week? Well, I mean, that's, that's something that we've been studying all year long. And uh, we've, uh, you know, developed and, and you know, go across the country and developed uh, relationships with staffs that play, you know, option teams. And uh, you study them. You take the video of teams that have played – uh, Navy really well um, and played Georgia Tech well or played, um, you know, Georgia Southern well. I mean, it, there's a lot of different option teams out there, and you always Air Force, who's played Air Force well, and you just look at them and you study them through the course of your offseason and see if there's anything that they're doing that's different than what we've been teaching. And uh, most of the time you come right back to, to just, you know, you circle back to who you are. And, uh, you know, putting your guys in position, you, you, you definitely have to – to make sure that you're sound in, in, uh, in, in the game as far as who's got dive, who's got quarterback, and who's got pitch. We're going to talk more about the Naval Academy and what SMB will look to them when we analyze the enemy. That's coming up next here on Tempo Talk with Chad Boris. While you're enjoying SMU football, More Disposal and Recycling Services is busy managing your trash. We do the dirty work so you don't have to. More Disposal offers complete waste management, from equipment purchases and installation to service and maintenance, all completed in-house. No job is too big or too small. We also offer Paper Retriever, a free paper recycling program for schools and churches. Call 214-357-HELP and let's talk trash. That's 214-357-HELP. Family owned and operated by SMU alumni, More Disposal supports SMU football. Pony up! When it comes to your signage needs, trust the experts at Fast Signs North Central. With more than 50 years of knowledge, Fast Signs North Central will help provide you with a true turnkey experience. From branding and design work to complete production and installation, let Fast Signs North Central make your vision a reality by calling 214-890-4444 or find them online at fastsigns.com backslash 11. Fast Signs North Central. More than fast, more than signs. Highland Park, Preston Hollow, and Lakewood Emergency Rooms, the official freestanding ER of SMU, and your neighborhood no-wait ER. With three facilities conveniently located near you, we're able to provide the Dallas area with upscale, quality care for all your emergency needs. 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. Visit HighlandParkER.com for more information. Highland Park, Preston Hollow, and Lakewood Emergency Rooms. Pony up. Are you serving or have served our country? SMU's Lyle School of Engineering offers master's programs and tuition reductions for military personnel across the globe. For veterans and those in the uniformed services of the U.S., our distance education programs provide a way to help engineer our nation's future. It's just one way SMU is saying thank you to those who protect and serve our country. Check it out at lyle.smu.edu. Maggiano's Little Italy specializes in serving lavish portions of authentic Italian-American cuisine made in their scratch kitchen. Offering homemade pastas, signature salads, prime steaks, fresh fish, memorable desserts, and now brunch. Maggiano's Little Italy. It's a great place for good friends to gather to share good times and great food. Not only do they have an incredible brunch, lunch, and dinner, they are the perfect choice for a banquet of any size. Come as you are seven days a week. At Maggiano's Little Italy, you get more of everything. Maggiano's is located at North Park Mall in Dallas. Wouldn't it be great to go to the game without the hassle of traffic and finding parking? You can when you use Wind Transportation. It's what the Mustangs do. GoWind.com is where you can book a ride for two to two hundred or more. Wind offers sedans, SUVs, limos, minibuses, and motor coaches, and will make sure getting to and from the game is as enjoyable for you as the game itself. Your time and your experience is our passion. So visit GoWind.com to book. That's G-O-W-Y-N-N-E.com. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips. We're here at Ozona Grill and Bar every Monday night from 7 to 8 and on 770 KAAM. The SMU Mustangs on the road this Saturday at 2.30 to play the Naval Academy. It is time to meet the enemy presented by the Cox School of Business offering the new Fast Track one-year MBA designed to launch your career in just 12 months. Visit coxgrad.com for more information. The Naval Academy, uh, a six and three record on the season and uh, five and three, I'm sorry, five and three. They're looking for bowl eligibility this week. Uncharacteristic for them that they've lost three straight coming into this game. What do we uh, see different about them this time around? Well, I, you know, when you when you study these guys, I mean, they're, they're still who they are. They still run the option. They're they're uh, they're still trying to get you out leveraged and, and uh, take advantage of of, uh, of what they do. Uh, but one of the things that you, you really notice, I mean, I know that they've, they've had some injuries at quarterback. Uh, last week the quarterback went out again. And, I, and actually, you know, Zach Abbey is his name, and he, he's the second leading rusher in the country. Hmm. And uh, went out again last week. Uh, I anticipate he'll be back this week. But, uh, you know, the, the message is from, from everything that we can gather is they feel like they've kind of gotten away from who they are. Uh, they've thrown the ball a little bit more than what they really want to do. So, you know, I think what, the, what you're going to see this week is you're going to see them going back to day one install of who they are, the dive and, and uh, you know, the load option, the sweep, outside sweeps, the counters. Uh, we're going to see their best. It's, it's the last home game of the year. It's senior night. Uh, they've done some really good things this year. It's just the consistency is what they've struggled with. And I know, uh, uh, you know, listen to Coach, he's, he's been in this situation before and, and – uh, you know, they, he'll, he'll have them back ready to go. They're, they're uh, converting it. Their third down conversion rates 30 is almost 50%. They're averaging 33 points a game. And then, you know, and defensively, I know that they've had some, some injuries as well. They've had – I think they had a suspension. But uh, he'll be back this week, a corner. But, uh, you know, when you look at everything that they've done this year and you look at all the, all the teams that they've played – uh, and, and the margins of victory and in their, their defeats has only been 10 points. That, that's the, the largest. Outside of the first uh, game of the year against FAU, uh, the most it's been is 10 points. So every game they've been in, won or lost, has been, has been a very small margin, some by two, some by three, uh, seven, and, and in 10. And uh, so we know it's going to be a four-quarter battle. There, there's no doubt about that. They've only punted 27 times this year. So that's a – uh, you know, again, it's all about ball control. They're averaging 35 minutes a game, uh, hanging on to the ball. So we know the possessions will be limited. Um, you know, they're giving up. Uh, they're only playing defensively. They're playing 63 snaps a game. And for any you know, idea how many snaps offensively are we averaging a game, we're averaging about 84 snaps a game. And so when you cut down 20 snaps a game, you average scoring a touchdown or field goal about one out of every 12 snaps. 
So when you cut down that many, you, you know, you're looking at it, it. That's why you're seeing the margins being very close. But we knew that. That's what they've done each of the last two years. They're fourth in the conference in Russian defense and sixth in pass defense. So, uh, you know, and they, they've, they've created a few turnovers, not as many as they've done in the past. So, uh, you know, we, we know we've got our work cut out for us. It's all about SMU, though. I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you. This comes down to our will to and want to, and can we bring the passion and desire? Can we pack it? Because it travels with us. And, uh, and if we can, and, and knowing that we control our own destiny, there's no reason why we can't go up there and play the, our style of football, what we've seen uh, uh, this past week in particular. Uh, their uh, option offense, not, not exactly the same as uh, what uh, a lot of us used to see probably 20 and 30 years ago. They don't run the true wishbone. They have the slot backs. What kind of different plays do you see out of that as opposed to like the old-fashioned triple option? Well, it's still the same. I mean, they got their A back and their B back, and, and they motion these guys quick motion. They'll, they'll, they'll quick motion and return motion off of them and doing the same thing. In the end, they always get back to some type of broken uh, wishbone offense. And, uh, you know, they'll have a, a, they leave that slot back in there to load out on the edge, whether it's with quick pitches or, or uh, with a load option game. But, uh, again, it's really similar. There's a lot of similarity in the wishbone and, and the, the, the true slot. Um, but, the, to me, the true slot is pretty difficult to cover because you got so many – you got basically four vertical threats at any given time. They, of course, do this in large part because they don't have the, the same size players, especially on their offensive line. And the, the, you talked earlier in the show, you mentioned the, the cut blocking that they will do, and then they do it within the confines of the rules too. But is this the kind of week that – makes you really concerned about the health of your defensive line and your linebackers because of that. Well, not really. I mean, it, this, is, this is about playing football. This is old school football. It's playing physical football. The guys will be in full pads this week. We've, we've been against this uh, through the course of this season uh, during, during uh, fall camp and sometimes you know, that we've, we've talked about it and uh, gone through it during practice. Um, and so that, that's really what it comes down to. You're going to have to come out and play football, play physical football, and understand that this is part of the game. Uh, the one thing that I know, and, and when you see teams that have played well against Navy, and going back as, as far as you want to look back and since they've been running this offense, teams that have had the success, they've won the line of scrimmage. And so it's really going to come down to a defensive line that's going to be physical and, and try to win at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you, uh, your only trip you've been up there was two years ago, uh, your first year here at SMU when, when the Mustangs played at the Naval Academy. Pretty cool scene, though, and, uh, when they bring all the midshipmen in for the game, and it's a really cool, cool atmosphere up there. Yeah, it is, and, and got great respect for, for, uh, for those guys and, 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 and ladies that defend our country and come out of the service academies. I mean, they've uh, – they obviously have got uh, the you know, football is is the easiest part of their day. We get that, but uh, yeah, it is. It's a neat environment. If you've never been, um, um, it's something that you definitely would want to go to. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't really, to be honest with you, I don't go up there to look at the environment. I go up there to win a football game, and you know, I hey, I enjoy all that, and I appreciate that, and we'll appreciate the end of the game. But uh, we're going up there with a job to do, and and that's just uh, that's that's the mentality that we've got to have. It is a 2.30 start. It is on CBS Sports Network this weekend, the first of two straight on the road for SMU. Uh, next week they will be at Memphis at 11 a.m. and then the home finale on November 25th against the Tulane Green Wave at Gerald J. Ford Stadium. This is uh, Tempo Talk with SMU head coach Chad Morris. We'll wrap things up and uh, get the keys to success for SMU at Navy. Coming up next, you're on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. With over 7,000 athletes in the greater Dallas area, Special Olympics Texas is dedicated to providing programming for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. By offering year-round training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-style sports, the athletes get a chance to develop physical fitness, build friendships, and experience the thrill of friendly competition. SMU Athletics is a proud collegiate partner of Special Olympics Texas. For more information about registering an athlete or signing up to coach or volunteer, visit SOTX.org or call 800-876-5646. For over 15 years, Texans have trusted Firefighting's finest moving and storage to provide professional service for their residential or commercial moving needs by our teams of off-duty firefighters and professional movers. Whether it's packing, moving, or storage, Firefighting's finest professional staff will provide SMU fans with an unparalleled level of customer service. Visit us at firefightermovers.com for more information. Ask about our weekday move special for SMU fans. And remember to use movers you can trust. 
Maggiano's Little Italy specializes in serving lavish portions of authentic Italian-American cuisine made in their scratch kitchen. Offering homemade pastas, signature salads, prime steaks, fresh fish, memorable desserts, and now brunch. Maggiano's Little Italy. It's a great place for good friends to gather to share good times and great food. Not only do they have an incredible brunch, lunch, and dinner, they are the perfect choice for a banquet of any size. Come as you are seven days a week. At Maggiano's Little Italy, you get more of everything. Maggiano's is located at North Park Mall in Dallas. ESPN's Neil Everett here. This college football season, Nissan's putting you in the driver's seat. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com. Build a customized Titan wrapped in your school's colors. Then register for a chance to win it. Or you can win a trip to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Enter the Nissan Heisman House sweepstakes. Take on today. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Ends 12 8 17. Open to residents of USDC 18 and older. Official rules at NissanUSA.com backslash Heisman House sweepstakes. Sponsored by Nissan North America. It's our final segment this week of Tempo Talk with SMU head coach Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips. See you every Monday night. We're here at Ozona Grill and Bar from 7 until 8 and on 770 KAAM. I want to remind you that the Mustang Band is the hub of SMU spirit, and now you can show your spirit by joining the Diamond M Club. Memberships are open to all Mustang fans, and we encourage you to join by visiting diamondmclub.com and help support the all-volunteer Mustang Band. SMU at the Naval Academy at 2.30 this uh, Saturday afternoon and let's get our keys to success brought to you by Nissan. A win for your team is a win for you too. There's nothing quite like it except driving a Nissan. Visit ChooseNissan.com and take on today. Nissan, a proud supporter of college athletics. Give us those keys to success this week on the road. Well, you know, coming into last year, we had an opportunity to win one of our last two to become bowl eligible and uh, we were unable to do that. Unable to finish strong like we train in this program and talk about in this program all the time about finishing, finishing something that we started and finishing in a way that's up to our standard, which is best. And, uh, and we, didn't, we were unable to do that. And we were actually embarrassed last year uh, in that last game. Uh, you know, it, it was 28-24 at half and outscored 47-7 uh, to seven in the second half, which is unacceptable. And so the embarrassment that that, uh, that left a, a bad taste in, in, in a, lot of, a lot of our guys and, and this program – uh, for quite some time is the training of, of during the off season, And so to be able to come into a game like this, uh, we've talked about this moment, and uh, we've got to come in with a passion and a want to and a will to. Uh, it's going to be senior night for them. It's going to be the last home game. We know we're going to get their absolute best, uh, but it's not about them. It's all about us, and we've got to come in with that that want to, uh, and we've seen that. Uh, so we've got to, be, got, to, got to have it. And next, we've got to play assignment sound. We know that on defense from uh, – you know, dive quarterback pitch. We know we're going to get that, but yet still knowing you got to be, uh, you know, uh, con- conscious of the pass. Uh, they will run the, the verticals and switch seams and all that, uh, and they'll play action you. And uh, so those things you got to be aware of. Uh, we got to take TDs. It's going to take touchdowns to win this game. It's not going to take field goals. You got you're going to get limited possessions. Uh, you got to capitalize them. That's one thing. Looking at Temple, the way they did, they 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 opened up. Uh, their first, I believe, four or five possessions, they went, uh, they went field goal, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And uh, when you do that and you put them behind the sticks and force them to do something that they're not, uh, that's your best chance. And then we got to play four quarters or as long as it takes and have that mentality uh, because we know in every game that they've been a part of, it's been a close game. This is not going to be any different. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight all the way to the bitter end. It, you talked about uh, towards the end of last season when you guys had those two chances to get bowl eligible and, and, and how – against this team too there was uh embarrassing at the end of the season do you go back to that with your players do you do you remind them of things like that yeah absolutely absolutely yeah there, there's no doubt about it I, I brought that up yesterday in our team meeting and uh, we'll bring it up several times this week uh and remind them that uh now they were playing for something too they, they if they had they won in which they did they played for the conference championship at their home field mm-hmm. and so there was there was a lot on the line that game uh, but uh, we, we did not play well, uh, especially late in the game, and we didn't finish strong in the second half. Uh, and so those are things that uh, we've trained for, we've talked about, and, and is unacceptable in this program. Uh, are you seeing those signs from this team that they are uh, cap- more capable maybe this year of avoiding an ending to the season like you had last year? You seem to see the team that's turned a corner like that. Well, you, you know, I, we'll see. You talk to me <laughs> in about 20 days, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. But uh, – you know, I, every indication for where this team has started, where we've grown through the course of this season, 
Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing that's given me indi- any indication that this team's not going to finish strong. And all I can ask them is their head football coach is just give me their best. And if their best is good enough, then that's, that's quite all right with me. And uh, if it's not, then you know what? We'll pick ourselves back up and we'll keep going. But, uh, you know, our best is good enough. Uh, and we're going to keep playing that way, and but it's got to it's got to start today. It's got to start tonight, and uh, you know, luckily we got a few hours tonight before before it uh, turns 12:01 that these guys can get a little bit better. So hopefully they're doing they're taking care of business and uh, watching a little bit of video tonight on their own. Uh, you won your last road game a couple of weeks ago at Cincinnati. Do you like the way your team is uh, approaching when you go on the road? Do they feel like you feel like they're comfortable with that? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's we approach. Uh, road home it really is really irrelevant to us it's it's a routine we're in a routine this late in the season you're going into your 10th game of the year I mean you you pretty much are are set in how you do things it's all about your mental preparation it's all about a want to and a will to and and uh these guys will have a great plan in front of them and and uh they're they, I know this they were extremely disappointed and very hurt in that locker room last Saturday night and because they felt like that we gave an opportunity away and we did, and uh, so that passion and that hurt uh, will carry forth, and in, in the motivation and that want to for that we need for this Saturday night. Health wise, where's everybody at this week? You know, everybody in the country is is beat up and, and banged up, and that's just part of it. And uh, you know, we guys, when we hire trainers, and we got a training room, and we got hot tubs and cold tubs and ice packs, and, and we got it all. <laughs> and uh, look, I, and, and unless you have been, you know, but the doctors have just said you cannot go. I, I don't want to hear that you're, you're hurting or you're limping. It, look, I don't need that. All right, everybody in the country has that. If you're ready to go and the doctors have cleared you, then you either are want to and got a will to and let's go play. If you don't, then look, we can, you can stay behind. Uh, and it's the wives trip this week. And, and uh, look, we may need, we, we may need extra rooms this week. So if you, if you, everybody's hurting right now and that's part of it. That's why they call it off season. You'll get a chance to get healthy. But our guys have that attitude, and that's what you love about them. Coach, appreciate it. We look forward to it. Saturday afternoon, SMU at Navy, 2.30 kickoff. It is on CBS Sports Network, and it is also on 1310 and 96.7 FM, the ticket beginning at 2 o'clock with the pregame show. We'll be back here next Monday night for Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. For the coach, I'm Rich Phillips. Thanks for joining us every Monday night at Ozona Grill and Bar. On the Mustang Sports Network, from Learfield, live from Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue, Tempo Talk with Chad Morris has been brought to you by the Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options. Visit lyle.smu.edu. BMW, test drive one at your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Find your comfort zone. Credit Union of Texas. Be a part of something unexpected. CUTX.org. Experience more. Also by Ruthie's Rolling Cafe. Voted the best grilled cheese in Texas. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Mustang Sports Network.